so the, the point is that uh, will be rather rough this presentation, and as I show you, will I will mainly discuss two different areas that is uh, the goods of Taranto and the interconnections between Zali and Sicily during the late Bronze Age. I much depending on some books, uh, for instance, um, most of all this book is about Edomite pottery by Jones and colleagues, which has been a uh, fixed point for all the research in the in the in southern Italy uh, right now. This is instead the chronology by Ryan Ryan Jung, and uh, just that if you need that you, we can uh, come back to you. Sorry, Crete should not have been present here. But I come back to the two areas. Well, thanks to the book by John Setali, uh, we have a rather standard presentation of what the situation is uh, across the Little Abbey 3A and 3B in uh, uh, southern Italy between imports <coughs> from, uh, from Greece and local production of Mycenaean uh, type materials. And you see immediately that the distribution setting apart this point here over here, sorry, this point over here in the um, in, in northern Italy, which can be also disputed, the, uh, the, 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 the situation is that we have mainly local production already in the Gulf of Taranto and in the area of the Union Sea, and we have a lot of imports from different areas in the same area and also in Sicily and uh, When we go on, we can see that in, during late Latin 3D, which is a very important period that we'll come back for two weeks later in a short time, uh, we again have this lot of production which is concentrated in the area of the Gulf of Taranto and some production in the southern of Sardinia. And uh, mm -hmm. wider diffusion of the imports of the recognized and the, the, uh, the attributed imports, but again with the uh, in, uh, relevant in importance of uh, Sardinia and uh, the Gulf of Taranto. And then in 3C, we have this fact that I remembered in the uh, um, presentation of the session that is that Sicily. Uh, almost lacks any, <coughs> we have some spots we, without clear provenance uh, in, uh, in Sicily in the, in, during the 3C, but uh, uh, has a dramatic uh, fall in the number of, uh, of uh, material, Mycenaean materials, while we still have in the Sardinian way, and in the area that we described before. And we also have local production in Northern Italy, more widespread around, but again, the main concentration is still in the group of towns. Uh, so, when I go Father, um, what is the situation, the comparison of Sicily and Sardinia in terms of what the analysis have said explicitly with the specific analysis is imported or other important views? So the numbers are not very high, but the trend is very clear. You see from bottom to top that uh, Sicily has this peak during the Tapsus period of 3A and 3A slash B and Sicily in 3D a little bit, and but sees this fall in, in numbers uh, going on. Uh, on Sardinia has a different pattern, uh, somehow an opposite pattern. From 3B on and 3BC, we have, in, that is 3B late, we have a lot of imports and we, and we also have local production. We almost have no local production in Sicily. So what that, well, the point, one of the points that I want to remind is that the Cyprian book and also us uh, believe that maybe also something existed in the late Atlantic 3D connecting the Sardinian world, the Sicily, southern Sicily, like the hotel where we have uh, Sardinian pottery both imported and locally produced, Comos and Villa Cortina of Demos and the East. So this is one of the possibilities for these connections. And anyway, it remains the fact that during 3D, uh, sorry, 3C, Sicily almost disappears from the connections that uh, for the rest of uh, its distribution. Uh, uh, in Sardinia, we have interesting uh, uh, sites that will bring new, new uh, reflections about the uh, old. We know very well, everybody of us knows very well, the Nurag and Tigori. It's a strange, horrible life condition. This very strange Nurag with a lot of Mycenaean uh, um, pottery. But the recent find of uh, a plain site, a site located in the, the plain without apparently neurotic structures in the area behind the lagoon of Quartus and Feleta is very, very important and interesting for the future development. It has remains of huts, roads, pottery of 3DC uh, aspect, which is not yet attributed to local or imported uh, uh, materials, but this will maybe help us very much to understand more what is happening in Sardinia that seems to be more and more important exactly this 
So when we compare instead what happens in the south, you know, the south of Italy, but mainly obviously in the uh, um, Gulf of Taranto and uh, adjacent areas, in uh, comparison with Sardinia, we can see that we have all this abundant material around more or less the same late phases, but what is important is that we have the peak in the locally produced materials. So the kind of interaction that we have in the south of Italy is a little bit different from what happens in Sicily, where we have almost only important materials, and in Sardinia, but there is a balance that we will understand better with this largest case, but which seems to work in that such a way. What more about the Gulf of Taranto? In the Gulf of Taranto, there is the concentration also of the GM derivative pathways, like the gray pseudominion, that it has this distribution. This is largely doubtful. This is maybe one shirt. Uh, recent excavations at Punta de Dambrone here in a late Atlantic 3D context that showed absolutely no fragments of uh, uh, gray minion. So the, the distribution is very clear. There is a special interaction zone that you can define in this part of the South of Italy. This is also one of the parts where the derivation of the pitoid of uh, a GM type, which go on as a tradition introduced in the uh, late Atlantic 3A, B, up to the Iron Age in, in South of Italy, uh, has this main concentration is distributed uh, uh, rather largely over South of Italy, but its main concentration is still again in the same area. So this is a special interaction. It has also been uh, advocated for the origin of some of the uh, handmade varnished pottery that can be found in, uh, in uh, the Aegean and the Levant in this period, and also for some bronze materials that show communication, the southernmost point for metrilite uh, knives uh, found sometimes also in the uh, Aegean East uh, in Brody. So uh, now I try. I hope that you have understood that uh, working in a very rough way, we can divide this kind of pattern that we see mainly in Sardinia and Sicily, which are connected by some indications like the Russian pottery in Canatello, and uh, the, the, what happens mainly in this area, which has the other mass of connections during this late phase of the life. Um, I will go through not charts, you know, this chart is just to show you what is the uh, evidence for different areas. This is the Adriatic coast, and in the Adriatic coast, local materials are uh, apparently dominant, but we have also an inversion in Rocca Vecchia with a lot of imports during 3D from Greece, G is for Greece, and instead we have a reversal, but with some unclear facts on the Adriatic coast. So the Adriatic coast, which is very close to Greece, obviously, which has great connection across the, uh, uh, the passage of Otranto, has problems. So maybe. We see the plane of Sibiris down here. In the plane of Sibiris, we have a constant, uh, uh, setting apart this point at the very origin, domination of the locally produced pottery. What is very strange is what happens around the town. We have two side, main sites, which are Porto Perone and Scoglio del Torno, 10 kilometers apart. And Scoglio del Torno is the place where most of the imports are and still remain. So what to think and what to imagine about this pattern? You see the distribution of the sites that I've shown you. This is Broglio and Torre Modillo in time of Sibiris, local production mainly. This is Scoglio del Torno, mainly imports. This is Porto Perone, mainly local production. And this is a dwindling situation in the, in the, in the Adriatic coast, mainly in the southernmost side. Copa Navigata only has, mainly has local production here. So we can imagine something like having a set of centers which have more contacts, but straight contact like here, and maybe in some cases, Rocavecchia, and then some periphery of some kind inside the southern Italy uh, uh, pattern. This is the distance between Scoglio del Tonno and uh, Porto Perone, which are two harbor sites both. So, uh, now I will skip all this part of my presentation because it is uh, too uh, long. <laughs> I want uh, here to show you that uh, anyway, the quantity of materials that we have from uh, uh, imports uh, is uh, uh, very high already early in the stratigraphy of project research. And that we uh, happen to have in some uh, huts up to 30% of the diagnostic materials. So we have a very high percentage, but locally produced. So what is the model that we get that? 
And we developed the three possibilities for models. One is the normal center periphery, which should have a homogeneous distribution across the landscape. And this doesn't seem to appear at local scales in South America. The other one model is the one of the gateway communities connected with other polities which are independent in a peer policy direction. And the third one is the gateway communities with techy centers of limited scope without a peer symbolic entertainment, but with a derivative line from the center to the periphery. So it is rather complicated to understand what uh, we think, but we don't think that a hierarchic center periphery model works because we have a gradient too quick between the site of uh, Scoglioletone and close port of Verona. But possibly we may have to do with uh, a connection between gateway communities, or, or in some period, gateway communities, and other independent polities which develop their own capacity of uh, uh, producing locally materials uh, connected to the uh, Mycenaean products, but with a substantial independence. So the colonial model, that has been sometimes invoked also for the Tunnel and maybe for Tapsos, which is not in this image now in the, in the uh, discussion of the model, uh, may have or still some possibilities to be introduced for these uh, uh, connective centers. But what we think generally is that we also inside Southern Italy, we have necessarily to think at differential ways of acquiring the products that can be up to now efficiently traced by the uh, analysis and the uh, local production for the distribution of imports. That's all that I have to say.